All right. Good morning, Rotarians. Thank you for joining us. This club meeting is called to order. Hey, shortly I'll be sharing my screen and leading us through another fun presentation to direct the conversation. Periodically, I'll bring the screen down so that we can see each other's beautiful and friendly faces and have more dialogue. Family and friends are always welcome to attend our club meetings. So don't hesitate to invite someone like maybe your hairdresser. Feel free to speak out as you would during an in-person meeting, but if you're not using your microphone, please be sure to put yourself on mute or maybe I'll do it at the cost of a club fine, <laughs> Chris Broadstock. All right, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Welcome everybody to- I was the muted. <laughs> yeah, I muted you. That's because I muted you, but it's all right. It was before the club meeting. You're, you're in good graces. Uh, Welcome everybody to the Fortuna Sunrise Fortuna Club a meeting for uh, December 16th, 2020, volume 24 of my presidential year. We have an amazing, awesome, superb Rotary Club and I'm so thankful to be a part of it. And at this time, I'm gonna bring down the screen share and see if we have any guests in the house. Looks like we have uh, from the Fortuna Club, Diana Rios is joining us. Welcome, Hi, Diana. Diana. Yeah. Morning, Diana. Sweet. And I think at the moment, that's, that's everybody. Cool. All right. Let's get back to this regularly scheduled program. All right. Oh, hey. Let's see. So at this time, we typically be doing a flag salute, but since this is a virtual meeting and speaking in unison is pretty difficult, why not do a little bit of an American history lesson? Did you know that on this day, in the year 1773, the Boston Tea Party was a culmination of protests against the Tea Act about the extent of the British Parliament's authority over the British, uh, British American colonies, including new taxes, including one on tea. The colonists' primary dispute was no taxation without representation. Following the decision, um, officials in Boston who refused to return three shiploads of tax, tax tea in Britain, a group of colonists boarded the ships, destroyed the tea by throwing it into the Boston Harbor, as the story goes. One interesting fact uh, as I was d diving, d kind of doing a historical dive into this, was actually the tea prices didn't increase at all. They were actually very cheap. And it was uh, basically a government bailout from uh, the British government. And they, ha they had like this hemorrhaging tea industry, wasn't making any money, tons of tea. So they sent all these ships with tea and they had it at a very low price, but there was a little tax thrown in there. And so the, the big argument about that was not the cost of the tea, but that there was, there was a tax included and we were bailing out these uh, British companies that, the, what was it, East Indian Tea Company was actually selling, uh, I think Chinese tea, not actually Indian tea too. Anyway, I digress. That was kind of a fun one. Um, that was today. Uh, Simon, Simon yeah. is that where the term, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? I think that's where that came from. Problem, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, the price of tea in China is low. I mean, according to this, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> at, le at least my dive was that. Uh, and what else did we have? We also had a. Uh, well, yeah, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I've got. I've gone too far. Inspirational message of the day: the best antidote I know for worry is work. The best cure for weariness is the challenge of helping someone who is even more tired. One of the great ironies of life is this, he or she who serves almost always benefits more than he or she who is served. Ooh. Pause. Four-way test, we are going to Rotarian and past president and banana fan, Ross Rob. Why, the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Magnificent job. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's get into those announcements, shall we? 
a little light, but we do have a lot to report. Let's see, Christmas decoration contest is underway right now to spread holiday cheer. The Fortuna Chamber of Commerce invites Fortuna residents and businesses to participate in the 2020 Holiday Dazzle Decorating Contest. Well, if you haven't submitted yet, you are out of luck because right now it is the voting time. So there is voting that I think it can be done every hour or daily on the Fortuna Chamber site. And you can also get a map of all the locations um fortunachamber.com forward slash dazzle would be the page to go to and so check that out also little update our local interact club at fortuna high school participated in the fortuna fire department santa sleigh program by purchasing groceries for families in needs in need students were given a list of items as well as a budget and they shop for these families with food insecurities they also wrote 100 Christmas cards to give two holiday cards to seniors in our local care homes and senior facilities through this wonderful program. Uh, this is the last week to make a food do donation to this pro uh, program at the fire department for their food giveaway. Um, this year's Santa Sleigh program is serving around 160 families. Um, and that includes a total of over 300 kids, I, almost 400, you know, definitely over the halfway mark of 300. So a lot of people, and, and if you're not familiar with the program, just a Reader's Digest version of it is uh, families that have identified themselves as um, just really struggling, maybe having some housing shortage or food shortage. Um, this program gets them a couple of gifts uh, maybe some socks, a couple of pairs of clothes, uh, maybe a, uh, some food to, to help them through the holiday season. With, with this is just a super tough time for a lot of families. And, um, you know, just being in the education field, sometimes you really see, um, you know, behaviors act up around this time because maybe the most stable spot that, that some of these students have is at school, maybe the most consistent meals that they get is at school and they're gonna go in home to two weeks of not so much of that. So there's a lot of people out there in need. Um, there's definitely an uptick on it. And uh, I don't know, Diana Rios, am I missing anything about Santa Soleil that needs to be reported or did I do a good job? No, this year we decided not to do the delivery of the gifts so this weekend is the weekend where the families will be driving through at this fire hall to pick up their gifts um, and then we because we moved everything up a week we saw you know we had bought for 60 families and because that's what we had and then the last five days before we did our wrap day which was just selecting the gifts for the families uh, we got an additional 100 families. So that was wow. pretty, or, or close to 100 families. So that was um, kind of, you know, exciting and, and intense too. So it was, it's was it been an interesting time. And um, this year, if you are thinking about giving, um, it might be a good year to give to Santa Slay as um, we had ordered for 60 families, but we ended up having to buy locally, which is good for our local economy. Um, to buy a, a bulk of the items that we needed um, last minute because we were doing a wrap day so much earlier than normal. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, President Simon. Yes, sir. Um, that's a very worthy cause and something that we've given to each year as a club. But can you go back to that slide just previous? Yeah. And, and past presidents, do you ever remember the uh, program ever being called. Can you go back to that? Simon? Oh my gosh. Well, I'm already, I'm already finding you because there was a spelling error. It was Santa's siege. It's a Santa siege. Yes. Yeah. That that's a new movie. It's going to be a blockbuster <laughs> hit. I promise you, it, you know, it'll be Santa with a whole bunch of Spartans. It'll be, no, never mind. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. You know what, Ross? Yes. For pointing out that spelling error, five dollar fine for you, buddy. There you go. You, I'll there take you. that. Did you? I'm I'm in the Century Club, and oh, Chris. Why don't you Chris, pass it along to somebody? Chris Chris Bronstock is he? Did you notice his chat? Yeah, about, did, uh, being fine. He's so, five dollars before the meeting. I mean, that's. So let's give him another five dollars from me. Oh my goodness, ten bucks! Uh, he's 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 pumping his fist. He's okay with that. Thank you, Chris, for being a good sport. Hey, okay. Simon. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, Diana, are those additional families' needs uh, being met, or is there still significant shortfall? 
Yeah, we accidentally um, purchased extra items last year, um, toys. So we had an over uh, an influx of toys. And then this year, we normally have one or two families that will buy for one or two families. This year, we had four families buy for 12 families. So that really did fill like a big gap. Um, but uh, the donations, like our Interact Club normally gives $1,200. This year we gave $300. Uh, or, no, excuse me, our Interact Club gives $2,400. And this year we only gave $300 because we weren't able to do our fundraiser. Uh, our Rotary Club made a donation to offset the difference. Um, so that way they'll get that full amount. But we they weren't anticipating that. Um, but, yeah, there, there will – I guess there will always be a need um, – our club just finally made our donation to the backpack program, and Dave Morris said he has never seen somebody so excited for a three thousand dollar check. So there's other places to give to, but and you guys already do so much with the backpack program. But yeah, the 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 needs are met with the 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 program. There was just um, when we get the forms for the families, there was extra forms that said. If you have extra food, these families need it. It was more than what we would normally see. So we're definitely seeing that food shortage on those. So that was why our internet club took our $300 that we had in our bank account and said, let's go buy extra food this year. Diana, is, is there a, a depletion of reserves going on too? Because I, I know your, your organization has, a, or the committee that you're on, Santa Slay, uh, as a bit of a reserve as a buffer? Have you guys had a dip into that a little bit more than normal or this year? Yes, okay. but I, I don't know what that dollar amount will look like because we ended up getting an influx in donations that same week of our last meeting. So I, I don't know what that is exactly. Okay, no, it's just, it's good for all the club members to, to hear and, and maybe board members will have a have a conversation about Santa Slay and, and Food for People if, if that's if that's the pleasure of the board, it seems like a year where people could really be using it. So, okay, let's see here. All right. Oh, and it looks like might as well introduce uh, Doris has came to join us too. Everybody, give it up. She'll be our speaker today a little bit later. Thank you, Doris. All right. Let's keep this show moving, shall we? Okay. So. Although, you know, we're not doing our in-person seize candy uh, this year, uh, one thing we could all agree on is that we wanted to continue our giving to the Seas Community Fund. This is a fund that was created to assist local people with their traveling expenses while they were battling cancer. And this fund totally, typically gets 15% of our sales during this annual holiday fundraiser, and it's usually around 4,000 bucks. May, you know, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. So how can we continue to keep the giving, you ask? Well, we have a solution, yes. During the entire month of December, we're gonna call this club to make donations to this fund, a virtual pass the hat. But in this case, it will be a raise the hand. Each meeting, you can make a contribution to the Seas Candy Fund by raising your hand or private messaging during this moment of giving. But it gets even better. For every dollar that you give to the Seas Candy Fund, our Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club will match your donation, making that five bucks, 10, or making that 100 bucks, 200 big ones. So get ready. Get ready, everybody, as we feel the giving spirit during this month of December. Are you ready? I will call out three numbers this morning, $5, $25, and $100. And if you can help out the Seas Community Fund this year, raise your hand, hold it up, throw up a reaction emoji, or use the chat feature to pledge that dollar amount. You can even pledge for each amount to total 130 bucks of giving if you are so inclined. You ready, Rotarians? Let's do this. It's been wildly successful. Let's keep up the momentum. Here we go. How many folks are in for five bucks this morning? Let's see some hands. I see Ross. How about, let's see here. I see Kurt, I see Aaron. Okay. All right, oh, I see Scott Downey as well. All right. How about 25 big ones? 
25 big ones. We've got Steve, we've got John, we've got Don, we've got Herb, we've got Heather, we've got Kurt, we've got Waltz, we've got Greg. Awesome, thank you so much. You guys are so giving. And the last, the biggest number, 100 bucks. Who's in for 100 this, mor this morning? 100 bucks, I see Kurt, outstanding, outstanding. Ross, what do you think? What's a rough number we're up to? I think we're doing pretty darn good this year. Well, you're muted, buddy. Um, based, I haven't taken that tally. I need to get those from you, uh, those recordings. But, you know, seeing what we are at, especially with the match, I think we're definitely hovering near the 4,000 mark. Amazing. Amazing. Great. You guys did outstanding. So we'll, we'll get some final numbers as the month comes to a close. Who knows? We may switch it up. I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling like maybe next week, maybe we, we choose another organization. If we're getting close to that 4,000, maybe we do something like Santa Slayer, Food for People. One last little pass the hat for the month of December. That was outstanding. Thank you, everybody, for your giving. We really, really, really appreciate it uh, in lieu of that fundraiser. And hey, think about it. How, how much is your time worth? Four hours out of your day? That's, that's, that's considerable. So thank you for uh, put, putting some money up. For that. All right, cool. Let's, let's keep the show on the road. Um, backpacks. This week, uh, December, goodness, whatever it is, uh, 16th, uh, we have Buster and Lori Garrison, as well as Don and Sue Finch. And January 13th, because we're going to take the next two weeks off, Hence the, the food shortage for, for folks out there. We have Buster and Lori Garrison as well as uh, Jeannie Wise. So thank you so much. All right. Hey, Simon. Uh, sir. This is uh, Jeff. Um, can you tell us where the, where the budget is for the backpacks program? Are we still looking for funds? Um, yeah, no, offhand, no, but maybe let's see. Is is Bob, Bob, do you, do you have any numbers on, on what we're on for backpacks? I think I kept it the exact same as last year. I really didn't change the numbers much. We did. We, well, so we had uh, 4,000 from the club. Uh, we stroked that check and we had another 3,000 grant from the Patel family that we passed along. So we're in 7,000 bucks right now. Awesome. For, for this year. Woo. That's, that's amazing. Uh, and comparably, comparably speaking to last year, uh, we are about, um, we're 103. And I think the highest we got last year was about 120. So with the additional three coming from the Fortuna Club, the Noon Club, uh, that should put us about the same as last year for the number of kids being served. Perfect. Um, Aaron had a, a really good question. Are we doing anything special for backpacks for Christmas? So this is... This would be the last backpack before the holiday season. Is um, is anybody willing? I, I don't know if we've got any grocers here this morning, but is anybody willing to uh, maybe do something special? Maybe we put a special holiday candy in there. I don't know, candy canes, anything. Maybe maybe that'd be, I don't know. We're just spitballing ideas this morning. I know it's kind of last minute, but it would be I awesome. have a box of, um, I have a box of um, little toys, activity books, stackable crowns that were from kids free holiday movies. We didn't do the event this year. So I have um, over 103 items. If you wanted to me to drop those off somewhere, you guys could put a couple items in each bag. That sounds outstanding. Steve, the, the place, if she was going to drop something off, that would be at the McLean Center? The, the uh, Probably the best place. No, that, that, that's not uh, that wouldn't be a good place. Okay. Uh, I would say fa the, uh, uh, the family resource center there at Walker would be okay. the best place. Okay. Awesome. Great. They're open all the time. I'll drop them off tomorrow and then they'll and, be And there's a, a young uh, fellow there that, uh, uh, Adam is his name. Uh, if you give them to him, he, he comes to help us pack every week. Perfect. Is, is that, is that for lunches getting packed today? Correct, I believe. Oh, I'll bring them today. Yeah, yeah. today's the last one before before Christmas. Thanks, Great. thanks, Bob. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, hey, uh, Steve, I'll round up some candy canes and drop them off. Enough for? Did you say 103? Uh, yeah, it's it was 103 last week, so I I assume it's the same this week. Right on. Okay. 
So, so I know I'm just pointing out the obvious, but here is a great example of Rotarians being people of action. Aaron, beautiful idea. We've got Rotarians for the other club joining together. Bob coming up with the candy canes. We're all doing this last minute. And we're just making it happen. So this is what's so special about Rotary. This is why we get together and, and the energy between us is, is just got ripple effects in our community. So well done, everybody. Thank you. So, hey, since I'm an art educator at Fortuna High, my theme of this year has been art. And so exploring different artists and giving you a little look into their work and, and getting you inspired, hopefully, in different types of art. And this morning, our artist of the week is Pippa Haynes. Um, and I think her work is outstanding and quite different than a lot of the stuff I've shown so far. So um, after working for a number of years in editorial and retail set design, Pippa took up embroidery. And from, the, from there, her journey began. Haynes started her exploration into preserving nature through this medium of thread. From unique artworks to home goods, the idea is to promote and celebrate the art of hand embroidery. The influence of that, the, the three-dimensional designs informs her larger standalone pieces, which explore the organic shapes colors and textures of nature, preserving a 360 degree or 180 degree micro habitat through the medium of thread. And so, you know, art can be in a lot of mediums. And sometimes people think of art as just painting or just sculpture. But um, when you look at like a show like Antiques Roadshow and they show these old pieces of furniture or something like that, they're worth thousands and thousands of dollars. That, that is an art form. Art relates to so many things that we have. Uh, in society. And this is no exception. This artist is just fantastic. I love how she creates these almost super realistic versions of nature's, you know, beauty out of thread. And um, so here's some, there's a detail shot. There's one of those 180 kind of like a canvas with a, with a uh, beautiful wooden frame. And then she's got this glass dome piece that's got that 360 view to it and just, just gorgeous stuff. Let's go a little deeper, shall we? Lemon Pepper Studios is the, the name of her website and uh, kind of a workshop. And she offers these, uh, these workshops for people to learn the craft, currently rage, ranging from curated art pieces to home goods. There are plenty of beautiful items made for the creative um, and the embroidery loving homemaker, whether for living or working to create a space, not only that delights, but inspires. Her studio is situated in the rural countryside in the rural countryside of Wiltshire, England. And while Lemon Pepper Studio is a space for original artwork, it's also um, de democratizing uh, hand embroidering. And from this concept, Pipa has developed a line of accessories, home goods, uh, Harbor Sherry, oh gosh, Har Harbor Dashery, sorry, and that promotes and celebrates the art of hand embroidery, offering embroidery lifestyle that accessible to all. And we've got a, a bee coming into a flower there to, uh, and um, what is that? Some bananas hanging off a tree. I really love the three dimensionality of that, that leaf of the banana tree coming out and um, some beautiful goodness. I, I don't know my flowers too well, but maybe, maybe- Is there galanthus uh, or um, snowdrops? on the far right. Yeah, Don Jewett, thank you, thank you. The, the bees going into fuchsia. So, so I was asking about the process of this because you know, I, I, I love process-based art and I guess she takes um, pieces of like a, a cloth and then wraps it to make these three-dimensional sizes and then embroiders. I don't know if the embroidery is done first, I would assume so because it'd be easier to get at, but um, it's just really, uh, fantastic, taking something like embroidery to this next level and making it so three-dimensional and making a career out of it. I mean, her pieces, I think the low-end pieces are usually in the several hundred dollar range and they go up and um, she, I think she's doing quite well for herself. So let's see here. Who am I going to call on this morning? How about Rotarian Scott Downey? I don't think you've played this game and if you have, why not play it again with me, my friend? Are you there, Scott? Hey. All right, yep, so hey, here I am. Scott, tell me hey. talk about this piece by Pippa Haynes, and it's called Underneath the Mistletoe. Yeah. What a little holiday theme piece here in a bell jar. 
you've got to be pretty low to get under that mistletoe. There's kind of for worms, it looks like, or small snakes. Worms need holiday kisses too. I suppose so. And the glass in the back is to keep children from destroying this masterpiece. And I notice there's no tree. Yeah, the tree's missing. Exactly. I mean, but isn't that typical with mistletoe? Uh, depends. I see a buzzard going by, and uh, he's looking at a mistletoe tree across the way, but he kept going. I don't know. Maybe there wasn't another buzzard to kiss. Anything well, else that you got got to say about this art piece, sir? Uh, I like the bass. <laughs> the turning on the bass is nice. Uh, I like the uh, eyeballs the, in each piece of mistletoe. It looks like they're actually looking at you. And they kind of reach out and, uh, and grab you. It looks like the little leaves themselves are like little green tongues. Yeah. And they invite somebody to grab them. That's why the glass is used to protect them, I suppose. You know, Scott, that, that started out a little rough, but man, it was like a, a slow rolling boil there. It just picked up as it got as you got on there. I liked I liked uh, some words you use like reaches out and grabs you, like some personification too in your description of the art piece. It's very nice. Very nice, sir. How about a ten dollar fine for your beautiful critique of the artwork and discussion? Happy to do it. Awesome. Thank you so much. But I was curious, is that a giraffe behind your head or is that, it's actually, is, that, is that your attempt at this kind of art? No, no, it's it's like a skewed, almost Dutch angle version of her piece. And this is a mushroom. Oh, very nice. See the, the bell of the mushroom? So each week, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been throwing up a virtual background that's a detailed shot of our Artist of the Week to kind of give you a little bit of uh, insight on what it's going to be. So maybe you could guess before it happens. Hey, Chris and Simon? Yes, sir. I, uh, I just wanted to comment on the embroidery artist. Uh, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't really follow the thread of uh, Scott's uh, commentary, but I you could leave us in stitches. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh. oh boing. I want to pass uh, about 20 bucks in the fine off on Bob for those puns. What do you think, Bob? Are you down for a $20 pun, pun fine there? Sure, it was, that was pretty wretched. I'm in for 20. Okay, goodness. Yeah, you ripped that one. With puns like that, you should be in education, I tell you. It just goes to show, Bob, you shouldn't needle people like Scott. <laughs> oh, oh. Zing. Uh, give, give that man some too, Simon. Come on, wake up here. He's, well, he's, on the, he's in the Century Club. I mean, he's just going to pass it on to somebody else. Oh, well, in that case, That's all right. $10 fine, Ross. I'd say we're hanging on by a thread here. Oh my oh, God. Another, another thread. Okay. Okay. I'll give it to Kurt. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Woo. Oh. I deserve it. That was bad. In the best way possible. Oh my gosh. I love, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. All right. Well, hey, let's play one last art game here. Okay. We're gonna play which art piece sold for the most money. And I think we're gonna call on Heather Kelly this morning. Heather, are you with us? Good morning. Good morning. So looking at these magnificent art pieces from the Mexican artists, Frida Kahlo, can you make a guess on which art piece fetched the highest dollar in auction? Is it number one, which is Aro Retrada Con Mano? Is number two, Aro Retrada con Mano y Perico? Is it number three, Aro Retrada con uh, Tiempo Vuela? Which one? One, two, or three? Which one fetched the highest dollar amount in auction? I am going to guess number three. Number three? Ooh. You were correct. <laughs> yeah, that, that sold for $5 million in auction. No fine for you. Great job. Uh, the, the first piece sold for a million dollars to pop star Madonna. And the second piece, $3.1 million. So good guess, Heather. Goodness, you guys are back to stumping me. Ah, okay, well, we'll keep it going. Oh, whoa, extreme zoom in. Let's see. I think I'm going to pull down my screen share. 
I think who I was going to recognize is not here this week. So without further ado, I think I will pass it over to program chair, Aaron Dunn, for uh, our introduction of our weekly program. Aaron. Thank you, President Simon. It, I am so excited about today. Um, we have with us one of our past outbound exchange students, and she is going to tell us uh, she's doing so many exciting things, and it's just a delight to have her here today, Doris Gonzalez. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's so nice to see everyone, even if it's through Zoom. It's been quite a while since I've seen, I think it's been maybe like four years since I've seen everyone, but I still recognize everyone. I remember her, Donald Ross, <laughs> all the fun jokes. I think this is the funnest meeting I've been to that's so early in the morning. Doris, go ahead and what we're, tell us about what you're doing and how you're doing and your, what you've done since you graduated from uh, Fortuna High and um, just tell us all about yourself. Erin, um, I actually prepared a few pictures to share with everyone. Um, I was wondering if it's possible to screen share. It should, it should be possible. Give it a check again. There we go. Doris, I think you need to unmute yourself. All right, can everyone see this okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it all started in 2013 <laughs> when I did the Rotary Youth Exchange um, to France. And these are two of my best friends. I've kept in touch with them for a lot of years now. So it, it was really nice. Um, right here. So in 2015, I graduated from Fortuna High and I was offered a full ride to Brown University in Rhode Island. Um, this is, I actually ended up doing a pre-orientation program um, that was like STEM oriented. So this is a big group of friends. A lot of them I still talk to like after five years. So um, that was a really nice um, way to start college, I think. And then um, in 2016 through Brown University, I did a medical brigade to Panama. So we were there for a week and we went to like very rural communities. We did a kind of wide number of things. Um, we did, a, there was like a dental clinic and a medical clinic. So um, we were just kind of there to help the doctors out, to help um, people fill out information, people who weren't able to read or write. Um, we also did a public health portion of it where um, we kind of got together with um, another university from Boston and we looked at the uh, medical conditions that were most prominent in the community. Um, in this case, it was diabetes. And we kind of took the time to walk through everyone and explain like what the condition was and um, which things from their diet could make it better or worse and what type of activities they could do to help. So we try to make it really kind of unique to their lifestyle, not just like general information, but more things that they could really use. And then we did, uh, we went ahead and we did the same thing for uh, children and theirs was more um, like oriented towards like dental hygiene and we made like these huge teeth out of clay and we brought them in our suitcases and we showed them like how to brush your teeth and um, we helped them out like after school as well. So yeah, this, this was one of my treasured memories from Brown. And then um, while at Brown in 2018, I did a semester abroad in Chile. Um, the semester's focus, it was both cultural and academic, but um, we did do credits. Um, so I studied, I did, um, I think four neuroscience courses. I did three at the um, undergrad and then one at the graduate school. Um, neuroscience is not something they really offer for undergrad. so. I had some fun time spending time with older people in the graduate school. 
Um, and then I got to travel a lot through the program and also just like with the friends that I was meeting. So these two pictures we took um, in the desert, um, we went for, I think it was like three or four days and I couldn't, the pictures that I took of the stars don't do it justice. So I didn't put it on here, but I've never seen like the stars so clearly when you, at night, everyone in um, the town turns their lights off. So you can very, like you can lay down and it feels like you're like right up in the sky. Um, also, I, while I was there, I also did, um, I did a little like research, like personal research study and I, um, was in conversation with a lot of the local doctors and um, a lot of my professors. Um, during my stay in Chile, there was actually a really, a pretty important protest for the country um, regarding women's rights. So um, everyone in the universities was protesting and like everyone stopped going and they actually students moved into the universities and locked the doors down. Um, so it was a very unique thing to experience and um, I participated it with like to the best extent that I could. Like I spoke to my friends about it and they would have workshops and teach-ins during the day um, that were student led. Um, and then all classes turned kind of virtual. <laughs> it was a little bit like remote learning now, but um, yeah, I was, it was a really, I feel empowering thing to witness and to be a part of. And then um, at the very end of my stay, the second place I wanted to go to after France was Machu Picchu. So since I was in Chile, I was like, I'm so close, I could go right now. <laughs> so um, I did the Inca Trail, which we did it for like three days. And then um, we didn't do the whole thing, but we did like the very end of it. And then um, we made it to Machu Picchu. We had to get up at three in the morning to walk up like thousands of stairs to get there, but it was very worth it. Um, it didn't. It didn't feel like it was a part of this world. It was really incredible. And then in 2019, um, I graduated from Brown with my neuroscience degree. Um, the picture on the right is a lot of the friends that I made. I found a really good community at Brown. Um, a lot of the people I still talk to and you know, they're all off doing their thing like all over the US and some of them have moved to like a different country. So I still keep in touch with them. And then the picture on the left is my family. It was their first time going to the East Coast. So um, I took them to Boston and I took them to New York and I gave them a little campus tour. Um, so yeah, it was really special to have my family there for that moment. Um, it was a lot of hard work at Brown. Um, especially like being first gen. Um, there was a lot of, I think I found a lot of like gaps in education, but also um, it was a very rewarding experience to like make it through and, you know, to like think like I earned my degree. And then, so after I graduated, I went on to work in the local community in Providence. Um, I joined um, the Bradley Children's Hospital as a clinical research assistant. And so during my time at Brown, I did neuroscience, but I really focused on kind of studying like the, like the, um, like how psychology and neuroscience were related, but at a biological level. So um, I took a lot of classes on epigenetics and kind of trying to see how um, when there is a mental disorder, it could turn transgenerational and then how, which behaviors kind of we see when that happens. So when I graduated, I kind of wanted to do a little bit more research um, before I went to medical school. So um, I joined the team that works mainly with, um, we kind of do a lot of things like we are in the office, we're in families homes and we're in Head Start, um, Head Start School. So we do observations to um, help make sure that teachers are using the best methods for kids that maybe don't have like the most stable home at home and they need a little bit more support like emotionally and behaviorally. So um, we have a portion of our lab does programs to help the teachers and then um, the RAs go in and we observe them and we make sure that 
their the teachers like are doing okay and if they need any support we connect them with people and then the other portion of it is going into families homes and we would do visits that lasted about an hour and a half to two hours and we collected um, biospecimens we did a lot of questionnaires um, we did like kind of cognitive tests with the kids and then we would send those things to lab so we got kind of like the biological portion and the behavioral portion and then um, the papers that we published kind of tried to see the relationship between the two of them um, and see how they both um, kind of play together to affect behavior and the development of mental disorders in adulthood. And then after that, um, so I came home um, about a month ago to spend time with my family before to the next, um, the next episode of my life. <laughs> um, so I was selected as a Fulbright English teaching assistant um, to Thailand. So um, that will be starting in January and it'll go through um, the end of September. They adjusted the dates a little bit because of the pandemic, um, but Thailand is actually doing very well. They have about a little over 4,000 cases in the whole country. Um, and they have very strict rules like about quarantining when you get there, you have to stay in a hotel for two weeks. So that'll be kind of January. And then in February, I'll be moving to Phitsanulak province in the northern part of Thailand. And that's where I'll be um, uh, kind of joining as a teaching assistant. Um, so kind of the role or like our goal with um, becoming like English teaching assistants is we go to communities and schools that um, maybe don't have as many resources. And I feel like from what I've learned, it seems like in Thailand, it's very important where you start like elementary, middle school, they kind of all lead to whether you have like an, an opportunity at higher education or not. So um, Fulbright is kind of trying to fill in that gap by um, having us go to communities that maybe don't have as many resources or don't have resources to like the highest level of um, the highest level quality of education. So um, we come in and we do our best to help the students and to support the teachers. And um, after the Fulbright, I'll be coming back home to Humboldt, um, probably to see my family. And then um, um, the next step is kind of to start a post back and then go to medical school. Um, I still don't know what specialty. I have a couple in mind, like pediatrics and ne neonatal, but um, ultimately I do still wanna become a doctor. It's still in the plan. And I hope to serve um, in communities that need it, communities of color and that are low income. Um, after the next like four or five years of medical school are done. So um, yeah, that's still, that's still in the plan. Um, and the last slide is a huge thank you to Fortuna Sunrise Rotary. Um, I think that starting out with having this opportunity kind of put me on the path to um, fill in the gap with like a, a lot of the people that I was going to Brown University with, they had been to like very expensive private schools and like they'd had a schooling abroad and schooling here and um, they because of the place where they lived and maybe also their background, they had access to a lot of resources. And I think especially like going through the application process, I ended up applying to like over 20 colleges. Um, and I think that having the experience of going to France and ha uh, it helped me really like grow a lot and kind of like explore what I wanted to do and, and help me realize like I, I wanted to be a doctor and I wanted to travel. Before I left, I wanted to be a lawyer. So that was a pretty big change for me. And um, it's definitely opened up a lot of doors for me. And I think I really appreciate the fact that you guys kind of like believed in me and that you guys like went with a person of color. And, um, you know, I just really want to say thank you to everyone for that. And I really appreciate it. Amazing, <clears throat> Doris, woo, that's was a little emotional there. Um, <laughs> does any club members have any questions for Doris? 
How about, how about some of the folks here that, that knew Doris when she went through the exchange program? I think we were just kind of getting involved at that point in time in our Rotary career. Doris, Doris would you say that the Rotary Exchange Program gave you a, a much greater world view outside of Fortuna, more, more than you could have experienced otherwise? Yes, absolutely. I think um, it definitely did, not just because I got to visit a different country with like a whole different set of cultural norms, but it was also the people that I was meeting there. And, um, you know, like when I was there, I, I started the first Intrad Club at the high school, and it was just kind of like learning about how different people like want to help the world. And like, it, I kind of think about it in terms of like love languages, like I think um, like the Rotary Club in Fortuna is very, like they're very passionate about hope, helping community. And I've seen that that works out in different ways wherever I go. So I think like beyond being exposed to a different culture, it also helped me understand um, how to like navigate different, different cultures in terms of like figuring out how do I help and how do I do so and like in a very, um, like you want to be very conscious when you're doing it. You don't want to offend everyone, anyone, but you also want to make sure that you're serving the people that need it, not who you want to serve, but who needs to be served. So yeah, I think it definitely opened up my mind and um, it gave me skills that I've used when I've been to Brown and when I've been to Chile, when I've been to Panama. Awesome. Doris, I just want to say that <clears throat> Young people like you are exactly the reason that we do the exchange program. Yes. Thank I'll you. leave it at that because I'll get all breaky voice otherwise. <clears throat> You're here. We're, we're so proud of you, Doris. Um, and thank you for bringing that knowledge back to Fortuna. I thought you were still in Providence. So I was like, oh, you know, it's gonna be 10 o'clock your time, it, you know, but you're, you're here. So thank you so much for getting up uh, so early to join us, but it's just so great to hear from you. Thank you. I, I had one question for you, Doris. Uh, you said that when you left Fortuna, you wanted to be a lawyer. So what trigger, at what point did you decide to go into neuroscience or, in, or into a medical field? I'm just curious about what, clicked in you that uh, you want to make that transition? Thank you, Frank, for your question. And thank you, everyone else, for being so receptive and so kind. It, it really means a lot. Um, and Frank, I think I, I actually remember like the moment when I was like, I want to do neuroscience. I was in a bio class, but the biology teacher was she was like, what would you do if I told you that we could see love inside the brain? And I was like, what is she talking about? And then she started teaching us about like the eyes and all of those things. And it was just something that I had never even learned about. Um, I think I, I had done like AP bio at the high school, but it was um, a lot more, it, it was focused on like very general things. And I think being there and learning about that and just like I would stay after class and I would talk to her in my broken French and I'd be like, what do, what do you mean by that? And how does that work? And she would be like, oh, well, you know, these chemicals. I mean, of course, now I know like love is a lot more than just chemicals. But back then, just like hearing that. And um, my grandpa had also just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Sorry, he just passed a few days ago. So. Doris. I think, um, Thanks, Doris. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Doris, how about a lighthearted question? What if you, <laughs> if, you went, if you were back in France now, and I love this question, uh, I ask it every exchange student. You're back in France now, what food would you want to eat? What was like the highlight food of your trip? <laughs> that is a great question because I think about traveling in terms of food. <laughs> Like when I thought about Thailand, I was like, I had one Thai, um, oh, actually, I think she was hosted by you guys, or maybe by the Arcada Club. Her name was Fa. She came here about five years ago. 
Yeah. Yes. She, she's awesome. Um, I still follow her on Instagram. She just got her degree. But yeah, wow. Small world. I love it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was like, I know she was a nice person and I know they have really good food and Buddhism. So that was awesome. <laughs> but when I think about if I were to go back, I think I'd get the salty crepes, the galette. They're very, very delicious. There's like such a simple thing to do, but it's just like being there and um, like having it served with like a good glass of like cider or something is just, it sounds really delicious to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> cool, any other questions for Doris this morning? All right, thank you Doris so very much for uh, getting up early and uh, and yeah, we're we're applauding you now. This is the sign language for for applause. So works good on Zoom. And uh, thank you so very much for joining us this morning. It was great, great. It was a fantastic meeting. It was definitely one of my my favorite speakers of the year. Thank you, Aaron, for setting this up. Um, hey, don't be shy when you don't be shy. Check in with us maybe in a couple of years and and let us know where you are. Please. Please. Yeah, of course. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. It was very nice to see everyone. And I wish everyone happy holidays. Thank happy you. Holidays. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> well, keeping with traditions like Youth Exchange Program, why don't we do the weekly drawing and then we'll part ways this morning. I'm going to draw a ticket with a Rotarian's name on it and this beautiful uh, spray painted mayonnaise bucket here. And uh, then you could win untold fortunes or 80 bucks probably, right? Is that where we're at, Ross? Yeah, okay. Let's see what we've got here. How about Ken Houtby? Let's see there. Ken, buddy, you're still there. What are you gonna win? Did I tell you I put a $100 fine in this thing? I'm just messing. I'm just messing with you. Let's see, what is it? Oh, uh, not a hundred bucks, but pay five bucks. Is that too steep for you? Rotary. What was that, Ken? It's the life of Rotary. <laughs> life, the life of Rotary, yes it is. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Anything else before we part ways this morning? Thank you, Doris, for a wonderful program. Thank you, Rotarians, for being people of action and just awesome human beings. I enjoy these meetings. It's so important to keep getting together, even if we can't get together in person. It's, it's um, amazing. So keep up the good work, everybody. We'll see you in another week. Thank you so much. Have a great Rotary Day. Bye, everybody. Hey, Simon, can you...